How you doing, guys? I'm going to get straight into it. Um, we're going to talk about trauma. I've been thinking that it's really going to be of value to give a bit of a, a basic understanding and some of the uh, some of the like sort of like the exoskeleton of trauma and how trauma develops and how trauma can tend to affect us. I think that it's really important to lay this out and explain this because a lot of the time we, we don't actually have much of an, uh, I, I think sometimes when you're like, when you're involved in a certain area and something starts to become really obvious to you, like for me personally, I've been interested in this for many years. I've studied this in school. I've I've read a, like a ton of books about this. I've been in therapy myself and over time, what starts to happen is that your worldview starts to, it's like, it's like shifting and your default mode network, your baseline of reality eventually shifts. And when that happens, although that's positive for you because you have a, a you know, better integrated, hopefully a better integrated understanding and these beliefs have changed at a core level. One of the uh, drawbacks here is that you can start to sort of see everyone else. They, like, it's just like you kind of assume that what you're recognizing is like common knowledge in a way. And even though you might intellectually understand that that's not the case, at some level, like you, you, because you believe what you, you believe this is true, you sort of just project that out onto other people. But, uh, you know, there's obvious contradictions. Like for me, in the case of like understanding a bit, a bit more about trauma, and having worked through some of this on, on myself, and my own traumas with a therapist for the last nearly four years, um, having learned about this, like I said, in school, studying mental health, having read as many books as I have, when you start to go into this and develop this, it's almost like, um, yeah, as I said, you, you start to just see that as a, as a reality. But then what's gonna happen is you're gonna be hanging out with someone. I can't tell you how many fucking times this happens to me you're gonna be hanging out with someone and they're gonna see someone who's really struggling, like someone who's panicking, um, like like someone who's panicking over something that you wouldn't even con con be concerned with, or someone who's like, you know, um, shouting on the street, someone like these people, these people who are often like homeless and like severely mentally ill. And it's so easy to just brush them aside, right? It's so easy to just brush, like we all like to think that we're like highly compassionate, highly caring individuals. But a lot of the time, like at least my experience with people, it's really easy to just brush these people aside and just kind of think, oh, that guy's crazy. But what we often don't have is we don't have enough of a, um, we don't have a, a comprehensive enough of an understanding to, to actually, or like the, the stillness of mind or the foresight or sometimes even the fucking curiosity to take a step back and to think, what is happening to this person? Like what, like, okay, yeah, sure. Like I, the, the effect of this, like the apparent, the, the thing that I can see in front of me is that they're yelling on the street, but why are they actually like this? What does it come down to? How do you, I mean, cause at the end of the day, when we're born and we're gonna talk all about this, we're gonna go right deep into this in this video. We're born as sort of like uh, blank slates, right? Maybe at some level we have a certain kind of blueprint that's determined in some way, but we're, we're, we are born as blank slates. And if I'm born as a blank slate and I'm 24 years old walking down the street, otherwise enjoying my day, going to do what I need to do, and then there's someone else who's 31 years old and they're screaming or smoking a crack pipe at a bus stop, not giving a fuck and like really making a scene or threatening people. A lot of sirens today. They, it's super common when I'm filming a video. It's the, the way everything aligns, I suppose. But we'll see them and, and then it's like, what, so, so it's like, what's the difference there? If we're both blank slates, is it just luck? Is it? What does it come down to? What actually determines that they're gonna end up like that and I'm ending up like me? And then there's someone else who's in a way better position than I'm in and what determines that? It's way too often that I see this kind of thing happen and, and I see people get brushed off like that. It's way too often. On top of that, and this is something that I think we're a little bit defensive about sometimes, 
um, because it's so common and, and I don't think we recognize the damage that this kind of does and, and we're defensive about it because we don't really want to know. But I can't tell you how many times I'll be at a grocery store and I'll see an angry mother grabbing her little boy's arm a lot too tight, like not in a nice, not in a comforting way. She's grabbing his arm, yanking his body, body towards her and screaming into his face, screaming demands for him to be a certain way, for him to behave. And is it really that much of a jump to assume that this might be the same kind of person, volatile enough to assault that child, to physically strike them? I mean, if she can already grab him and that's what she's like in public, and we get defensive because we're like, oh, well, you know, like she could just be stressed. And it's like, yeah, she might be really stressed and I'm sorry that she's stressed. But if, if you're putting your hands on your kids or you're screaming in your children's faces, that says that you don't know how to manage, like you're not in a position where you can manage raising children effectively. And I know that's a very triggersome thing to hear. And it's like, who the fuck are you to say that? You don't have kids. And it's like, yeah, true, I don't have kids. But I, I do know what I've been through. And I do know the things that come up later in your life and that can interrupt your life. And it can be something as simple as being, being screamed out in a grocery store, the embarrassment you might feel there. Feeling like your trust is betrayed in a way. There is no reason to like assault children. There's no right that you have to assault children. Let's really be clear about that because um, When we defend this, when we have this sense of like, oh, you know, yeah, it just, it happens though. My, my mom did it to me and da, da, da. It's like, yeah, she did it to you. And now you're in a position where you're assaulting your child, repeating that. Do you want that for your grandchildren? And we don't tend to think at this level, but um, yeah, we remember this shit. You might not know that you remember as much as you do, but I guarantee you guys, there's a lot more back there than you'd think. So anyway, let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit. I'm gonna be sort of free flowing here and obviously we have a time limit. So try to appreciate that. Yes, there are like very many ways of looking at this topic and I'm not necessarily saying my way is the right way. I'm presenting you, my goal here is to present you with a basic understanding of, um, well, human psychological development and how we develop into who we develop into and some of the systems behind trauma and how trauma can affect us. That is my goal here. And yes, I've read a lot about, there are different ways of looking at it. Like the way that I'm actually learning it now from um, reading books like um, Internal Family Systems by Richard Schwartz, there is a lot more complexity to this. And there's only so much uh, that you can really present in a, in a shorter form video, but Again, we're gonna give you a basic exoskeleton because this is what I feel like people need. I think we need a basic understanding of how this develops. So without further ado. When we're born as a blank slate, we are so vulnerable and completely receptive to everything that is occurring in our environment. And sometimes we might think like, all right, we're receptive to everything in our environment. That, that you know, that means um, if we see, you know, if, we, if, if, if sure, if this thing happens right in front of us, if, if we're touched in that way, or like if someone says this thing to us or we experience this, like an explosion, that's gonna impact us. But actually what I wanna say is that it goes a lot subtler than that. There's a fantastic quote from the book In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts by Dr. Gabba Mate one of my favorite quotes where he says, um, children swim within the ocean of their parents. Children swim within the amniotic fluid of their parents unconscious, sorry. And I love that and I actually read that a few times and I sort of just thought about it and I've thought about it ever since. And it's like, yeah, that's one of the best explanations I've ever been given. It's not that we just um, absorb and get and we sort of get built up by what we're experiencing directly. It's a lot of it's indirect. It's the kind of vibe, if you like, 
Does that make sense? There's a certain vibe to your culture, to your family. There are certain beliefs that we might, our parents, our caregivers, our, our, our peers might not even be conscious of, but these beliefs determine um, everything from what we feel like is possible to how we cope with things. Like for example, in my family, I grew up around drugs and alcohol. And uh, yeah, by the time I was 13 or 14, I was learning to cope with my problems through the use of drugs and alcohol. Is that surprising? See, to someone else, they wouldn't even like, you know, I've met so many people now who have never really even thought about drugs and alcohol at that level. They've never been tempted by drugs and alcohol. Yeah, they may have other coping mechanisms that are just as deleterious or they might not have coping mechanisms for that stuff at all. But is it any coincidence like that for me? No. And is it any coincidence that my brother at the same age, maybe even younger than me, learned to cope with his problems with drugs and alcohol? No, it's not. It's not a coincidence. Um, we inherit that from our environment, right? And again, it's not just direct, like sure, part of it is directly perceiving the fact that there is there are drugs and alcohol, but also, again, it's we, we take for granted and we sort of, we're usually just completely unconscious of some of the subtler elements of our family dynamics, of what's going on in our home, right? Sometimes we can do this thing where we're like, oh, okay, no, don't, don't fight in front of the baby. Don't fight. Cause we, cause we have some like intuitive understanding that our children are aware of what's going on with us. We're like, oh, don't fight in front of the child. Like, don't, oh, don't, no, you know, we can't do this. We're, like, go to your room or, and we're actually exiling them to like a certain uh, little part of the house. And I think we like to assume at some level, like most of this is like happening unconsciously for us, but it's like, we like to assume that that somehow, like, oh, that they're, 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 they're not even aware of it. They're just in their room and they don't even know what's going on because we're so materialistic, but we don't realize that it's like, Guys, they know, kids know. I knew when I was in my room, when my parents, I mean, I knew because they were fucking screaming at one another, I could hear it, whether I was out, you know, it was horrible. And to this day, like, it's still like, I can find myself in tears, uh, bringing up those memories and realizing how damaged those parts of me were from seeing how my parents treated each other and how, you know, also how they would treat me at times. Um, it stays with you. And it's not just like, it's not just when you're in your bedroom, like, you, you know, you're somehow exempt from that. It's like, no, you, you still know that. So children swim in the amniotic fluid of their parents' unconscious. What we mean by this is children pick up not just what they see, but what, what their families do and what their fam how their families behave, but they pick up on how their families are, how their cultures are. And for some of us, what happens is we, our experience of growing up is so painful. Again, whether it's on the more gradual, subtle level of just picking up on so much discomfort and like, and, and, and fear, regret, doubt, alcoholism, drug addiction, various like prom promiscuous parents who just have various partners around all the time. That's something that we can pick up on, but some of us, we get it. And this is the part that we tend to have a bit more understanding on nowadays. Some of us get it in the sense where we're actually physically assaulted or God forbid, sexually assaulted really young. We're emotionally abused. We're, we're told that we're, we're basically like you, when you actually start to think about how fucked up this is, we, we basically grow up as completely, especially from the ages of like birth to like seven or eight years old. We're so receptive that it's not like we're just observing and picking up on stuff. It's like, no, our, our whole context of like how we make sense of anything from that part of life forward is determined by these. So when you're told you're useless, when you're told you're an idiot, when you're told that I never should have had you, when you're told that you need to fucking behave right now or you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a wallop, When you're threatened, when you're sexually abused, when you're isolated, when you're when you when you have love withdrawn from you, wow, that's a big one that we don't really touch on enough. 
when you have your when you when love is something that's very conditional and it's almost like oh yeah well if you don't do that you know i won't pay attention to you when we emotionally manipulate which is abuse by the way when we emotionally manipulate slash abuse our children uh they grow up their whole context of of, of reality they develop really in insecure anxious attachment styles they spend their whole life having to defend against that pain and that suffering that will do anything inside of them to stay bottled up. That pain and that suffering, that trauma, it, it, it's a complex system. It's not just down to like, oh, I kind of have this pattern that I inherited. I got to like get over it, you know, do a couple therapy sessions or like, you know, take some ayahuasca. It's like, no, this stuff is not just something that's happening in your psychology. This is your psychology. This, the super highways that you develop as a child, that all of the information that you're ever going to be exposed to are processed upon, right? They're pro processed upon those super highways. The context, not the content, but the context of your life is largely programmed in those formative years. So if you're abused and you're picking up on uh, negative vibrations like you know the quality of your home is negative is unloving high threat response fear of money fear about money fear about there not being enough scarcity whatever it is whatever flavor whatever brand of of, of suffering and of limiting belief that that your family and that your culture your tribe your even your peers have um you're exposed to that and oftentimes this stuff is so buried so unconsciously within us. It's so, these parts of us are so deeply hidden that we don't even understand that. And then our whole life is a mess. And it's like, we're suicidal. We don't know what our meaning is. We don't know how to connect with people. Sometimes we barely even know how to make eye contact with people. We don't believe in ourselves. We're so full of doubt. We're having these psychotic breakdowns. We're addicted to cocaine, whatever else it is. Add infinitum there overly promiscuous, whatever it is. And we don't even realize, like, we don't even have the time to start recognizing, like, what happened to me? Wow, do you feel that? Like, for me, I just felt like that wave there of that emotion. It's like, what happened to me? Because inside of me, like, yeah, sure, I'm like this grown man or this grown woman, and I'm doing grown man or grown woman things, and I'm apparently an adult. But inside of me, there seems to be like this little boy or this little girl that's really hurt. That's really injured. That really wants love and that really wants a, a acknowledgement and affection and attention. And every time things get bad, because you, sometimes you see people, like I, I was perplexed by this when I was younger. You'd see people and like, they just like, I've met, I've met like now I've met so many people and I've lived by myself for the last few years I've interacted with so many people I meet people and they're like oh yeah no things will be okay and they believe it I can tell I can read their energy and I know that it's like yeah things will be okay and then I just like I'm like what like no they won't like how do you think things are going to be okay and it's like you realize over time it's like because they never had any major reason to feel like things wouldn't be a lot of the time unless they learn to develop beyond it but the truth is, um, if you develop beyond that, you have the compassion to understand that and you also have the new perspective. That's, so that's really what's promised to you if you work through some of this trauma. And you can work through it, by the way. No, um, some people, like, they get so lost and it's like, oh, I never work through and they become a victim for it. But it's like, you are a victim at some level if you've been traumatized like this. And more, more of us have than we think. Sometimes we think that trauma is only relegated to like a select few who have been like physically, sexually, emotionally abused. But it's like, no, it can happen in subtle ways. If your family never knew how to communicate with one another and they never, or they, even to the point where you never had any discipline, you never actually, um, your family was so concerned about hurting you that they never, they never developed any healthy sense of rules and consequences. Well, that's gonna fuck you up later on and that traumatizes you, right? I think sometimes we have this sense we need to, we need to understand that trauma is a broader topic than just like 
you know, um, the, I think maybe part of it comes down to the dictionary definition, because obviously, like, the original definition of trauma is like a, in, like, you know, like trauma to your head if you were hit with a pipe. It's like damage from trauma. And then we're sort of making a more psychological, emotional equivalent when we're talking about psychology. But, um, yeah, it is actually a lot broader than that. These traumas and these dysfunctional mechanisms, these parts of us that get locked up inside, that it goes a lot broader than just, um, you know, because you were like very blatantly abused. So what starts to happen is as we develop our sense of self and our identity and our understanding of the world, um, it's based on a lot of the experiences we have in our formative years here, right? So if we grow up feeling like we're fundamentally unsafe and money is fundamentally hard to come by and drugs are a natural way of coping with situations, then we, is it any coincidence that in our 20s we like feel like money's really scarce and we're working at a supermarket and we're smoking weed every night? Uh, what if you grow up and you learn that violence is a perfectly normal way of coping with stress? Is it any surprise that we might lay hands on our spouse or on the other angle that we might actually think that it's normal for our spouse to lay hands on us and we actually defend them for their behavior? What if you grow up feeling like you have low value and low worth and you never really learned much about what you're worth and then you grow up feeling like, is it any surprise you grow up feeling like, Oh, no one would want to be with me. I might as well just, you know, give up. Maybe to the point where I'm so lonely, I might actually take my own life. Is it any surprise that we grow up feeling low value, low worth, like women grow up low value, low worth, and ending up in all these toxic relationships because they're just so desperate for some level of affection? It leads to all sorts of re-traumatizing. This is another interesting thing to recognize about trauma is the concept of re-traumatization, re-traumatizing. A lot of people who are traumatized when we're younger, we uh, end up living in our life in such ways where we constantly expose ourselves to circumstances that make us vulnerable to further trauma. And it works like a sort of <laughs> snowball effect of horror, essentially. It's a like terrifying, awful snowball effect where, you know, if we're, if we're a heroin addict, and we put ourselves in situations where we're maybe, you know, passed out around people who don't have our best interests. They're going to rob us or do, do violence to us, sexually assault us. What if we're in a situation where we feel like violence is normal and then we end up, uh, you know, in social circles where there's normal violence, like this does happen in homeless communities, this happens a lot. No, violence is normal to the point where maybe we're assaulted such that we, we never walk again. And then we're dealing with the pain. And it's like, after a while, it's like, and if we never go back and realize like, what is, what has all, where has all this come from? What do I really fundamentally believe about myself? And then when you start to ask these questions, you also start to um, learn so much more about yourself, right? You learn, you start to learn so much more about why you think what you think. And this is why for some of us where trauma actually starts to come up is when we actually start to grow and make some success in life. It's funny, right? Why would that be the case? Why would it be the case that when you're actually seemingly living a pretty good life, all this trauma comes up and the, this PTSD presents itself, for example? Well, it's because when you're so preoccupied with defending yourself against these traumas by living a low quality life that you ultimately feel like you deserve, it's almost like you're kind of walled off like you don't ever experience a good life like this but at least you're kind of your life basically your primary job in life your day job and your night job most of the time is to just defend against this suffering coming through you that's the purpose of your psychology basically when you're traumatized like that the psyche develops complex mechanisms to essentially stop you from feeling that pain and it does that through whatever means necessary whether it's forcing you to want drugs constantly, food constantly, sex constantly, um, whatever basically is necessary. And oftentimes it becomes a comorbidity, right? Which it becomes a dual diagnosis, which means that there's a mental health problem there. 
uh, mixed with an addiction and they feed off of one another and it spirals into something really horrific. Once you've seen this in people, it's, it's just horrific, guys, where, where this goes. It goes down to hell. It really does go down to hell and lower. So, on the other hand, um, you can imagine that if you're raised in a household that is loving and that is supportive and that is kind and that is respectful and you learn that it's normal to show affection, you learn that it's normal to feel that you can do, that you have efficacy, that you can do what you want to do. You learn that it's valuable to learn and it's enjoyable to learn. You learn that sometimes things are difficult, but you have one another's back and that you don't need a substance or like six hours of television to deal with these things. You just naturally deal with them and you re recognize that at some level there's a plan for you and that you become a stronger person. What if you realize that it's normal to um, have urges, to have like phys your physical needs are taken seriously and you're educated on them and you actually, it's like the chances of this person developing healthy, high quality relationships, a, a sense of self-efficacy and self-esteem are so much higher, guys. And oftentimes what happens for those of us who have not really necessarily we like look we've grown up in rough environments we've not necessarily grown up with a lot of this most of us by the way are somewhere in between like if we imagine like a completely loving supportive high quality environment on one hand and then we imagine like a devastating environment that is literally a daily pit of suffering most of us are somewhere in between there i don't think many people are on one or the other or a lot of people actually i think are on the suffering spectrum um hence the people you see with the mental health crises and yeah, um, I would actually imagine there are less people on the this end of it, to be honest. Maybe that's pessimism in me, but just from what I've experienced. But the thing is, um, what what tends to happen is later on, as you start to grow and you start to get out of these defense mechanisms and you start to actually recognize and acknowledge what's actually happened to you, what, a funny thing starts to happen where um, you do actually start to you start to recognize that your journey is sort of often to reparent yourself. And this is really funny, like it almost seems like a little bit of like an obscure, kind of like outlandish thing to say. It's like reparenting, what does that even mean? Like we hear stuff like that and like inner child work and stuff like that uh, sometimes. And we think, what does that even like, you know, what, what, what is that? Like, um, what does that even mean? But the thing is, guys, um, it actually makes a lot of practical sense. Like, think about it, because you get to the point where you recognize that it's like, oh, I don't, I'm, I feel like I'm a worthless piece of shit, and you reach that trauma in you, and that just comes out. It's not something you have to, like, it's like just naturally there's a thing in you that, like, when things don't work out, or sometimes when things do work out, you feel like a piece of shit. And when you actually consider that long enough, or you have someone, like, in my case, you have someone help work you through that, or you meditate enough, you recognize, you know, whatever. We're not going to talk about techniques and that and working through trauma in this episode. We're just going to, we're giving more of a, a theory and a, an outline. When you start to work through that, um, at some point, it starts to untie itself. That's kind of what it starts to feel like. It starts to feel like that trauma unties. Like it's like a knot that gets loose and then sort of like frays out and straightens. But then when that's there, there's also a big negative space now because there is just space. And in a way that space is very pleasant. But when that space is there, the, na the nature of a vacuum is that it tends to want to, in, um, something wants to envelop it, right? There wants to be something that's filling that space. And that's when reparenting comes in. Reparenting comes in where we actually start to supplant new beliefs and actually like let that inner part of us, that part that is often a lot younger than we think uh, those traumatized parts, we actually start to communicate with them. And we start to say, why do you feel like that? Why do you feel like you're a piece of shit? What if, and you know, we actually start to supplant new beliefs, like not just like hyperbolic, um, compensatory, like, oh, because I'm fucking awesome, actually. It's like, not like that. It's like way subtler. It's like, what if you actually could do what you wanted to do? What if you could be who you wanted to be? What if you could have a, an impact? And we start to think about it like this. And this reparenting starts to happen. And it's, um, you start to recognize that you are actually of worth and that you are actually of value. 
And that's really important, guys. And I, I wish, my, it's my blessing. I wish that for all of you. Um, trauma affects everyone in different ways. And it can be the point of this video, the message, if you get anything out of it, if I could summarize this for you. Trauma is a subtle and dense thing. It's not just direct, it can also be very indirect. Trauma is something that affects everyone in different ways and it, it comes through many different forms. And whatever it is, I think what you really need to know is that you can work through it, it is possible. There are resources in your city. Um, you might even have to start by just doing a bit of journaling and acknowledging some of these parts of you and speaking it to a friend. Some of you have really severe trauma and you're probably gonna have to get professional help for that. Um, it's always worth it, by the way, like if you're medicating your trauma with drugs and these sorts of things, like try to understand that, and you know, compassion for me, like I'm not, this isn't judgment, I've done the same thing, so I get what that's like, but try to understand that you are making it worse. It does get harder the more you go into the other direction. And when you make a commitment to yourself that you're actually gonna get help, it's a long road, but it's a road where every step is worth a mile on the other way. Right, every step is worth a mile of the other way because um, <laughs> yeah, every little bit of growth you have and everything you work through, every fucking hard night that you persevere through and you wake up and realize it's a new day, you're a bit stronger and you love yourself a bit more and you love the people in your life a bit more and you recognize that there's actually a good potential of you being happy. And those things that you always thought about yourself and that you always thought about how life was gonna be and how you could never do this or maybe you were always de destined for this, that starts to resolve. And not only does it resolve in you, but as it resolves in you, you start to impact other people naturally. That's why you're watching this video. It's not an accident. It's because I've personally done work on myself that the desire to share it out with other people is almost like just the desire to want to well, it's the love of sharing what you create. And this is one of the things that we can never really learn if we're so caught up in defending against. Um, well, yeah, caught up in these defense mechanisms, coping mechanisms. So yeah, I wanna wish you guys a, um, a safe journey, a high quality journey. Um, if you have any questions, if you have anything that I can be of value to you with, with this, please, please comment below. Uh, figure out, you know, send me a DM. Um, can you do that on YouTube? At the very least, comment down below and we'll figure that out if you, if you need support. If you want to communicate about any of this stuff, I'm happy to answer any questions that I feel comfortable answering. Um, help me grow the channel. Subscribe. I really appreciate that. I want to grow this up. I want to spread these messages more and I've got some great ideas for videos coming forth. Um, like the video. Share this with anyone you feel like will get value out of it. And uh, yeah, again, you, you can continue to move through. Um, your life can be so much more. So don't let anyone or even your own thoughts tell you that you're not able to do better because you are, trust me. Um, you're, a, you're, you're worth a lot more if you're dealing with this trauma. And um, if this sparks some curiosity in you, then uh, that's, I've got my purpose out of it. So yeah, anyway, that's me. A little bit of a talk, basic talk. We are going to be making more videos on this kind of thing. But this is a bit of a basic talk about um, trauma and how it can affect us. Um, lots of love, guys. I hope you're having a beautiful day. And that's me.